Hi everyone, it's Kathy Zilski. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I'm excited to be part of a blog hop for kicking off Stamp Timber at Simon Says Stamp. Today I'm working with the coolest set called Birthday Numbers and I am getting prepared for my daughter's next birthday. Yes, it's seven months away, but my motto, make your cards well in advance. Thank you. All right, let's look at the products. Again, I am using the Birthday Numbers stamp set. This is a huge 6x8 set from Simon Says Stamp. Such a cool design because you've got numbers. And numbers can be used for pretty much anything in card making, in scrapbooking. Plus, you got all the cuteness here of birthday accoutrement. And there's a whole series of just sweet sentiments in uh, sans serif all cap, the Let's Celebrate or Happy Birthday. And I love that friendly script font for happy birthday and celebrating you. Great set, so much potential, and it comes with coordinating dies, which makes it even more fun. So I've got those to work with as well. Love this. Now, for my card project today, I am going to be using a little bit of antique gold embossing powder from Simon Says Stamp. I've got a little gold confetti. This is from Studio Katya. I'm going to be using just my Versamark pad for my heat embossing. I've got some foam squares of different depths, a little tape for holding my dies in place, and I'm going to be using my new Escoda number no. 4 round brush today, along with my watercolors. This is a new set for me, and I have committed to figuring out how to use watercolors, and so today I will be putting my practice to the test. Because, you know, can't get any better if you don't practice. Thank you. It's in my motto in life. All right. More products that I am using today are my cardstocks. I have some black licorice cardstock from Lawn Fawn. I have Tangerine Twist from Gina K Designs. Uh, for watercolor paper, I'm using B watercolor paper. And then I've got a piece of uh, the 110-pound Nina Solar White that I will be using for my card base today. Of course, I'll be stamping with my Misty tool. I really, I don't like to stamp without it. I don't, I'm, I'm not gonna lie. And now it's time to get stamping. So I'm starting out here with my watercolor paper, the B watercolor paper. And I'm gonna go ahead and take out the two and the three because my daughter's next birthday. Again, I know it's only, it's seven months away, but she's gonna be 23. So that is the reasoning behind my number choices. And I also pulled out the little party hat too because I thought that would be cute to paint. And simple, very simple for me. Simple is good. Now I'm gonna get my embossing magic pad and really lay down a lot of powder because the B paper, as do many watercolor papers, they're toothy, they have more texture. And so I feel like they grab embossing powder more than a smooth cardstock would. So I'm using my Versamark ink here and I'm just gonna get these stamps nice and inky and I'm gonna give this a really good press down. Just really press over each of these numbers and get the hat as well so that it transfers my sticky ink. And now I'm ready to pour on this uh, antique gold powder from Simon Says Stamp. Gonna sprinkle that on and the magic, the magic ensues. As you can see, it sticks to where I've stamped. And it's pretty clean actually. I blow a little off here, but by and large, it's where I want it to be. And now I will get ready to heat set this. I've got my heat tool all warmed up first to make sure that I minimize the warping and the time that it has to hit the paper. And I just go over each of these embossed numbers until the antique gold powder is melted and shiny. Looks pretty good. Now it's time to paint. Now this is something that I recently learned, so I'm pretty new, okay? I'm not an expert in watercolor, but I learned this from Lydia Fiedler, who goes by Understand Blue. And Lydia taught me this. You lay down some clean water in the area where you want your paint to go. So that's what I'm doing here. Clean water, I've got two water glasses here. One is for dirty water and one is for clean. And I'm just, I'm laying it down. And I'm not really that skilled yet with this, but this actually turns out pretty, pretty well. I'm not gonna lie, I'm pretty proud of my results, but I'm starting with the clean water first, filling in the area that I want to paint. Now, I'm only going inside the sort of perforated, dotted, stitched, if you will, line, and then I'm bringing in my first color, which is red, and 
I'm going to create a blend of color that fills my entire letter. Now, a lot of dipping and going back and getting water and keeping a paper towel on the side, these are things that I've just recently learned how to do. So when I dip that paintbrush in, you can see that color start to spread. And it's not perfect, but I'm, I'm practicing, I'm playing. I'm making, I'm making the watercolors work. And again, a lot of dipping, clean water, dirty water, clean water, add more water to my palette of color. And here I've got this little palette, this little porcelain flower palette, palette but I'm pulling color, full color from off my full uh, Mission Gold Magello palette, which is just off camera. And this is, this is the process. And I think, you know, I am excited by this because I wanted to have a rainbow effect and I decided I'm not gonna go for the full rainbow. I'm just gonna keep it simple. So going the red, orange, yellow, green, that gives me just the right amount of color and it's a little easier for me to manage a small color range. Does that make sense? So if you wanna to try to do some sort of, you know, blended watercolor together, keep it simple. Keep it simple, because if you start small, you might have success, like me. Super excited about this. So I just repeated that same process for the three and the hat. And you can see there on the hat, I just went the same rainbow color and just repeated it to fill up. But I think that looks really good. So I let it dry completely, and then I went ahead and cut out some templates. Now, I use templates sometimes where I just take some cheaper, thinner paper, and I take my dies, and I cut them out so that I can lay that paper directly over my stamped and colored image, and I can frame it out exactly how I want it to be cut. Sometimes I make mistakes, and there is nothing that bums me out more than going to all the work and cutting it poorly. So when you make a template, you can slide your die right in and you can feel it. it. It locks into place. And the idea here is that when you run this through your die cutting machine, and I use a Platinum 6 from Spellbinders, then you're going to get a perfect cut because you framed it out. But when I pulled this out, something slipped in the taping and it was a little off. Now, this is not unsalvageable, all right? It's doable. I had a little bit of actual uh, paper that stuck. So for round two, I just said, you know what? I'm just gonna wing it. I'm gonna line up my dies. These are actually really easy dies to line up. And guess what? I had better success that way. So it really depends on the image. I still think templates are a great idea. I just sometimes personally mess them up. But you can try it. And there we have our painted die cut things ready. Now, time for the sentiment. And I just wanted to use the simple script celebrating you. I thought that was really nice, really elegant. And this is going on to my black licorice cardstock. Now I laid down a lot of powder because again, I feel like sometimes the darker the cardstock, the easier it is for little errant specks of your embossing powder to stick and show up where you don't want them to be. So if you lay down that, that embossing magic powder, it really helps. And now I can heat set the sentiment until it's all shiny and melty. And that looks really good. But you can see the powder left over, right? So one thing that I do is I keep a lint-free, it's an e-cloth, and when everything's dry, when the embossing powder is completely cooled, I should say, I wipe it off. And now I'm just lining that up on my paper trimmer to cut my strip. And now I'm going to get my card base ready. Now I've got some Nina Solar White. This is the 110. It is eight and a half and four and a quarter in depth. And I'm going to score it right at four and a quarter because I'm going to make a little square card. If you ever have trouble scoring and having your paper crack, make sure you score it a few times. You don't have to press too hard, but you, you want to give it enough pressure and then press it down. I, I have to say the Teflon Bone Folder it is worth its weight in gold. Um, that thing works amazing. I love my score buddy, but I absolutely would not be as happy without that tool. So now I'm gonna close my card, tape it down because I can't stand having the card pop up while I'm trying to line things up. And now I am going to adhere this celebrating you to the front of the card. I want it to be right about there. So I'm just gonna use my dot adhesive. This is the Kokio. I love this uh, big dot liner. And I'll place it down, get that in position, 
And now I'm going to go ahead and trim off the excess. And I'm just going to use my big paper trimmer. You just, you can line that up right at the side and then press your guard down. You feel it right where the edge of the paper is and cut. And that looks pretty good. Had a little bit of overhang um, on the other side. I just didn't place it all that well. So I went in here and tried again to line it up and just get a sliver off. I don't think I really hit it, but I think it looks good in the end. I'm amazed at how well this paper trimmer cuts. I never, ever used a guillotine trimmer before I started making cards. As a scrapbooker, never. And it's kind of changed the way I cut things, so it's amazing what a clean cut you get from a guillotine trimmer. Okay, gluing that down to the card front, and now I'm gonna pop up my three. And I just wanna point out too, I love having that nice margin of framing white space and the orange panel is three and three quarter inches square so if you want to know what that size is and that just gives you a really nice framing margin space and now I'm going to put the two in here but I want it to tuck back a little because I want my numbers to be a little overlapped and I love that the two has that flat bottom so it makes it a little you know quick and easy to line up and now I'm going to place the three just for a little overlap and the party hat Party hat's gonna get popped up with a thicker foam adhesive. I have a, a pack that has both thin and thick. Wait, thin? I have thick foam adhesive and I have thin foam adhesive. That's a separate pack. The thick foam adhesive is gonna give me just that little extra dimension when you are popping it on top of something that's already popped up. Because I like to keep it all level, you know what I'm saying? Okay, the last thing is to add just a little gold bling. Now, I've had trouble with tips. That's T-I-P-S. And I recently replaced the tip for my glossy accents. And I just bought the same tip for my multi-matte medium. And I think I might have found the tip for me. Thank you. Uh, I will have everything linked below, of course. But if you have problems with your tips jamming or things turning blue like I have had in the past, check out the Precision. I'm not even sure what it's called, but it's fantastic and it is saving me a lot of headaches. Okay, now that's placed, and that is basically my finished card project. Now, I think it looks so cute, and if you have a cute little square card, what do you need for that? Well, you need a square envelope. Now, I filmed this after the fact. I totally forgot to do this, so I just stuck it down, and here's what you do. You take a regular A2 envelope, and you cut a half inch, roughly a half inch, off each side. Super simple, right? Open it up, and I tear off the little inside hangers. Now, I learned this from Gina K from Gina K Designs and Stamp TV, and it has just been so fun to make square cards. So what you need is a really sticky tape, like a score tape or some sort of very thin, this is 1 8 inch, uh, double-sided tape. You cut it because you're going to re-glue your panels back after cutting them. And just lay that down. I, I always cut way too much, but trim off the excess. And now just peel it up on both sides. And we're gonna fold that back up, smooth it down, and we have just created a new envelope. And I just take a little corner rounder here and trim off each side just to create a nicer sort of finished look to my envelope. But now I have the perfectly sized square envelope for my super cute square card. Just a fun thing to do if you like to make square cards like I do. But keep in mind, you will need two stamps every time you send a square envelope in the mail. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video today. I just wanted to show you that even new watercolor people can make something that looks pretty good. So thanks for watching. Check out the rest of the amazing hop today, and I'll see you back here again soon. Happy Stamp Temper.